Good afternoon, this is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding, here to discuss the basics of how a civil willful FBAR violation may overlap into things such as civil tax fraud and criminal tax evasion, even criminal FBAR. Baseline perspective, civil FBAR violations are generally going to be non-willful. Sometimes they're willful and even less common, they're, um, they're criminal. Common situation, uh, person has foreign accounts, they know about the foreign accounts. They're pretty sure they're supposed to report them. They've got some foreign income. They're pretty sure that foreign income is supposed to be reported, but they don't take any further action. They're not completely sure, right? But they have an idea from what they've heard, what they've read, that maybe kind of, sort of, it should be reported. Would this qualify as FBAR civil willfulness? Probably. The IRS probably would not put that into the non-wolfiness category using a totality of the circumstance um, analysis. They would probably say, well, you had an idea, you didn't follow it through. It's either reckless disregard or willful blindness. So even though you had no intent to not report specifically, and even though you weren't actually aware that you were supposed to report, the facts tend to show that you could have known, but you didn't take the next step. And so you're probably going to get hit with a civil wolfiness violation. That tends to be 50% of the maximum account value per year or a hundred thousand, whatever's higher. The updated regulation kind of worked through uh, some of the fat that was in the regulation so that it matches the statute. That's the highest penalty they can issue that uh, examiners have discretion, but it's pretty difficult to get the examiners to come down off of that penalty, although it does happen. Looking at those facts, is that also going to be civil tax fraud? Well, when you're dealing with FBAR civil willfulness, it's a preponderance of the evidence, the lowest standard. Side note, uh, even the IRS's own memoranda has said back in 2006, that they were pretty sure that it should be uh, clear and convincing evidence, which is the middle standard. Um, and the memo was actually, uh, it was a great memo. But unfortunately, so far, courts have only been using the preponderance of the evidence. So one thing to keep in mind, even though you may have violated the FBAR civil willful statute by preponderance, of, uh, by preponderance of the evidence, that doesn't mean it's going to be civil tax fraud. Now, with civil tax fraud, there's no statute of limitations. Essentially, it can go on forever and, and taxpayers and the IRS can fight out uh, when that happens. But generally, there's no set statute of limitations. Civil tax fraud is harder to prove, though. Government has to show clear and convincing evidence. Okay. Generally, there'll be less monetary penalties than under FBAR civil willfulness, but the taint, right? If, if it gets around that you violated um, and were, were caught paying a penalty for civil tax fraud, that tends to have a taint that stays with the taxpayer, which is why they require to show clear and convincing evidence and not just preponderance of the evidence. So the takeaway from that is just because you may have uh, violated, the IRS says, right? The, uh, the FBAR civil wolf on his statute, if they show preponderance of the evidence, but they can't show clear and convincing evidence, if they're trying to show it's also civil tax fraud, then merely violating the FBAR statute for willfulness does not mean you're going to be subject to civil tax fraud. Now, when it comes to tax evasion and criminal FBAR, you got to kind of sidestep all the fear mongering online. It's, it's incredible the, 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 uh, how far attorneys will go to try to scare, already scare taxpayers into believing, you know, violations are automatically criminal. Their websites will have big red flashing lights on there saying you're criminal, but that rarely happens. Okay. Um, if someone violates the civil willfulness FBAR statute, that does not mean they're going to jail as with any criminal case. If there is some crossover with tax evasion, right, uh, there's an affirmative act as well. So maybe they, they intentionally filed an incorrect return um, or criminal FBAR, right? The government's, then it's a, it's a criminal case. The government has to prove its case, prosecute it, and show beyond a reasonable doubt, right? So it's not as, it's not as preponderance of the evidence or clear convincing. You know, the, the law school example, preponderance of the evidence is just over 50% and clear and convincing evidence is 75%. Reasonable doubt is 95%. So just because someone may have violated um, FBAR civil wolfiness does not mean that they're going to prison for tax evasion or criminal FBAR. The, the government has a long way to go 
in order to show that. Um, tax evasion criminal FBAR is much less common and there's normally several moving parts. And what I mean by that is it's not just, you know, someone forgot to or kind of knew they should have reported an account, but then that's generally not going to be tax evasion or criminal FBAR. Rather, it's more like they have a bunch of offshore businesses, uh, various sources of income, tax advisors, financial advisors, lots of people who told them, you know, they probably had to report or, or they should report or they should look into it. And, and there's way more there in the totality of the circumstance analysis. It's not just you missed an account. If you're concerned about this, uh, you may want to consider getting into one of the voluntary disclosure programs. If you're willful and if you can't certify under penalty of purview that you're non-willful, the main program would be BDP, which is the voluntary disclosure program. There used to be an, that program has been around forever. There used to be an offshoot of that program called the Offshore Voluntary Disclosure Program or OVDP. But the IRS terminated that program in 2018, I think it was September. But they also expanded the traditional voluntary disclosure program to include uh, much more detail about what to do in an offshore matter so that you would use the traditional voluntary disclosure program these days to do both offshore and domestic. Uh, we have a lot of free information available on our main website and our sub websites. You can always reach out and schedule a reduced fee initial consultation if you think it's appropriate. Again, my name is Sean Golden with Golden and Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.